all over the world, species clash in nature's savage battle of survival. On land, in the sea, and in the air, all are locked in deadly conflict. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the plains of Africa to the beaches of Australia, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. In the snowbound wilds of North America, the fight for survival is fierce. On this blood-stained battleground, two apex predators stand head and shoulders above the rest. Grizzly bears are North American tough guys. They can tower eight feet on their hind legs and weigh 1,500 pounds. Size, strength, and one of the deadliest bites on the planet makes them formidable fighters. Wolves are hardcore hunters, roaming far and wide to find enough prey to survive. Speed, teeth, and clever pack tactics mean they punch well above their weight. They can bring down animals 10 times their size. So when these two apex predators compete for the same meal, things get nasty. This male grizzly is emerging from hibernation. He's been in his den for months and has lost up to 30% of his body weight. It would be a brave animal that got between this bear and his lunch. A pack of wolves smell a meal. 280 million smell receptors, over 50 times more than a human, draw them from more than a mile away. This grizzly could kill them with a single bite. So the price of this meal could be death. The grizzly lashes out. The bear's back is a massive 300-pound concentration of muscle, which delivers enormous power to his forelimbs. At the end of his front paws, he has deadly four-inch claws. But the wolf is fast, reacting within a fraction of a second. And the pack has a strategy. Wolf packs deploy mobbing behavior like this when hunting prey, taking turns baiting and pursuing an animal until it's exhausted and weak. Their main weapon, teeth. This wolf has 42 sharp teeth, up to two inches long. When he closes his jaw, the knife-like edges of his back teeth slice past one another like a pair of scissors, tearing through the flesh of his prey. The bear responds by trying to get in close enough to use his bite. His 16-inch long head houses large jaw muscles and 42 teeth that power a bite of 1,200 pounds per square inch. Easily enough to crush a wolf's skull. But again, the wolves are too fast. And this far into the fight, the grizzly shows no sign of tiring. The wolves realize their mobbing tactics are no match for a bear built for endurance. With each swipe carrying the risk of death, they concede defeat leaving the grizzly to enjoy the winner's spoils. 
You only have to look at some animals to know they're natural-born fighters. Weighing in at over 3,000 pounds, a rhinoceros charging at his top speed of 30 miles per hour is lethal. To generate a force of a charging rhino, an NFL player would have to run at almost 300 miles per hour. The rhino's got no natural predators, so the only animals he needs to worry about are other rhinos. Dominant males can be fiercely territorial. They can mate with any female within their borders. So fights over territory can end in death, with the loser ending up a meal for scavengers. Zimbabwe, Africa. Two male rhinos size each other up. The big boss is 12 years old, and this is his territory. At just eight years old, the challenger is smaller, but filled with the confidence of youth. To take what the big boss has got, he has to beat him fair and square. He starts aggressively, putting the big boss on the defense. He shakes his head in threat. The message? Be afraid. Be very afraid. His horns are made of keratin, just like human hair. Dense deposits of calcium at their core make them hard and strong. Like our hair, they continue to grow throughout their lives and can reach 50 inches long at their sharp tip, which makes them a deadly tool for clubbing and goring opponents. But the big boss has horns too, and his are longer. He decides the challenger is all bluff and takes charge. He uses his body weight to drive forward like a bulldozer. The challenger can't get traction to resist. The big boss maneuvers his sharp horn under his opponent's vulnerable neck. The challenger's hide is up to an inch thick and can withstand pressures of over 4,000 pounds per square inch, making it twice as tough as rubber. But under his neck and chest, the skin is more than three times thinner. A well-aimed thrust here could penetrate his rib cage and puncture a lung. Under relentless attack, the challenger becomes bloodied and battered. The boss signals it's game over by defecating and spreading his dung to mark his territory. It's a clear message. Get off my land. All the wounded challenger can do is cut his losses and retreat. Northern Australia. Paradise with predators. The two that top the pile rarely go at it until now. Growing up to 22 feet and weighing up to 2,500 pounds, the saltwater crocodile lives in rivers and estuaries along the Australian coast. He hides with just his eyes and nostrils exposed. Until, in a flash, he lunges onto land and attacks with the strongest bite on Earth, killing his prey and dragging it back into the water to feed. Sharks are the ultimate sea predator. With some species growing up to 20 feet long and weighing 5,000 pounds. The first you'll see of a shark is an ominous dorsal fin slicing through the water. 
That might be the last you see of him, too. He uses speed, agility, and a jaw lined with razor-sharp teeth to kill his prey. These feared killers almost never meet. But when they do, there will be blood. The North Australian coast. A 10-year-old saltwater crocodile feasts on a dead turtle. And the smell of blood draws a 15-year-old sharp-toothed lemon shark. He can detect 10 drops of bodily fluid in a whole swimming pool of water. Fights between sharks and crocodiles are very rarely filled. So it's quite a sight to see the shark attacking, using the element of surprise to try to scare the crocodile off and claim the turtle for himself. It's a brave or desperate shark that takes on a saltwater croc in the shallows. The shoreline is the croc's turf. The biggest danger here is the croc's killer jaws. The croc's bite is powered by seven jaw muscles that give a crushing force of 3,700 pounds. Being stuck between his jaws is like being trapped beneath a pickup truck. He has the highest bite force of any animal on Earth, enough to tear a lemon shark to pieces. And the saltwater croc doesn't intimidate easily. When the waves drag the turtle into deeper water, the croc follows right into the shark's sweet spot. Now the croc must work fast against the ticking of the tidal clock. The shark circles the croc, trying to get at the turtle. His key offensive weapon is a jaw full of teeth. He has up to 200 teeth in each jaw. He grows new teeth throughout his life, with newer ones moving forward as older ones fall out, meaning the teeth at the front are always sharp. The croc meets the shark's teeth with armor. And trying to protect his precious dinner, he goes into a roll. Making a decisive claim on the disputed turtle. He drags it back to shore. And the shark decides he can't beat a determined croc on his home turf. He retreats, leaving the croc as king of the shallows. <laughs> Teeth are deadly, but add hooves, and the results can be explosive. The Kamarg horse is ancient and runs wild. In the tough salt marshes of France's Kamarg, it takes muscle, bite, and a whole lot of fight to survive. This is a Camargue horse family. The dad, the family's dominant male, and his harem of wives and children. This family life may look idyllic, but around here, the peace never lasts for long. Bands of testosterone-fueled young stallions roam the neighborhood. They have no harem of their own. The only way they'll get a chance to mate is to fight the dad for his. At the head of his band, the bachelor is pumped up and raring to go. The dad risks not just his family, but his life, because his opponent could break his leg a death sentence in the wild. The Dark Bachelor goes on the attack. His weapons, inch-long teeth. His bite is powerful enough to amputate a human finger, so he aims for his opponent's exposed neck 
where he could cut through flesh to hit a major vein or artery. The dad bites back. Teeth continue to grow throughout a horse's life. So as the older horse, he may have an advantage. The dad's ears are pinned back, a sign of aggression. And sure enough, he brings out his killer move. His double hind leg kick. Around 50% of his body is made up of muscle. Throwing his full body weight behind a double hind leg kick creates a force of up to 3,600 pounds. A direct blow to his opponent's legs could break them. His first kick fails to connect. But others find their mark. Each blow takes its toll until the bachelor can take no more. The dad goes home to his harem. The bloodline's secure. The bachelor leaves with nothing. When it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat, it's the little guys you have to watch out for. Give them half a chance, and they'll rip your head off. It came from outer space. At least, it looks like it did. Coming in a range of colors, they're the insect world's ultimate assassins. The Praying Mantis. With five eyes that can see movement from 60 feet away. And a head that can turn 180 degrees in either direction you could never sneak up on one. Its reflexes are faster than a housefly, with a strike that takes just 50 thousandths of a second. They eat their victims alive, and they'll even eat each other. You need a slow motion replay to see all the gory details. This is a giant dead leaf mantis. These are her hunting grounds, and she's fiercely territorial. When another mantis contests her claim, the three-inch resident on the left dispatches the intruder with ruthless precision. One blow, two blows, and her opponent's down and out. But the next invader is tougher. The smaller gray mantis on the right wants to hunt here too. But there's only room for one of them. They face off, front legs spread, their wings fanned out to make them seem larger and more threatening. But neither side is intimidated. And the resident attacks in less time than it takes a human to blink. Her arms are like spears, strong and sharp enough to pierce prey when deployed at full speed. But a chitin exoskeleton covers the invader's body and stops her from piercing through. The claw-like spikes of the resident's arms hook over the intruder's shoulders. She follows up with another attack, but this time, their arms get tangled. Sharp spines line her forelimbs. Like a row of teeth on an upper and lower jaw, they point in opposite directions. So once prey is trapped between them, any movement pushes them deeper into her spines. 
This is great for grasping her dinner tightly, but right now the resident is trapping her opponent way too close for comfort. She leans back to escape the invader's reach before counterattacking. Her arms knocking the invader's head down, trying to snap it off. She doesn't succeed this time, but her relentless attacks drive the intruder to her knees. And the resident finally has her hunting grounds all to herself. Puffins, they may look like innocent cuties, but those colorful beaks conceal a mouthful of pointed spines that mean when the gloves come off, it's not pretty. In Northwest Scotland, the Atlantic puffin breeding season is in full swing. Fiercely territorial, every year puffins return to the same colony to nest, along with over 100,000 other birds. Even though they compete with each other, there's safety in numbers. Because flying here is dangerous. This six-year-old, 12-inch tall puffin has a hungry mouth to feed. It takes six weeks for pufflings to be able to fend for themselves. Around a third of them don't make it. Several times a day, this father must hunt for fish. He can dive to 200 feet. And he needs to deliver his catch safely back home if the chick is to have any chance of survival. But that means running the gauntlet of terror from the skies. An Arctic skewer bird spots him and launches into attack mode. He wants the puffin's fish. To protect his precious catch, the father lands in a foreign part of the colony. He's hoping to blend in with the crowd, but this is hostile ground. Puffin fights can end in death, so this fishing trip is about to get a lot more dangerous. This puffin father is on a dangerous mission. Find fish to feed his newborn chick but he's been forced to make an emergency landing in hostile territory. This local guy won't stand for a total stranger this close to his family's burrow. It calls for a fight that could end with either of them dead. The local guy lunges. Their bright one-inch beaks lock. Pointed spines line the inside of their mouths. Great for gripping onto fish and other puffins. Locked together, claws take over. Curved nails can tear holes in the webbing of an opponent's feet or blind them, making it difficult for them to hunt and survive. The puffins use their wings as both offensive and defensive weapons. The crowd gathers to watch the brawl. Puffin fights are a spectator sport. With beaks locked, the wrestlers tumble dangerously down the slope. A fall from the cliff onto the rocks below could be the end of them. So when the father manages to twist free from the local guy's grip, he decides it's time for another timely escape. but he's coming home with nothing for his baby. So it won't be long before he has to go on another diving mission that could end in death. If you think it's tough work protecting one baby, imagine how hard you have to fight to protect a thousand of them. In one corner, the giant cichlid. 
Weighing in at six and a half pounds, he's got a powerful bite and a fighting spirit. But with close to a thousand eggs to protect from hungry predators, he's the underdog. And in the other corner, the serrated hinged terrapin. Weighing in at 15 pounds, she brandishes an armored shell, a bulldozer personality, and a taste for cichlid caviar. This may be the only time these cichlids reproduce in their life. So mom joins the fight too. The best defense is offense. Their weapons, a powerful jaw filled with hundreds of teeth. Their bite can easily draw blood in humans. They aim for the terrapin's soft head and neck. Around 50% of the terrapin's body is always covered in armor, a hard shell made of keratin. But the cichlids attack relentlessly. And finally get hold of the soft skin around the terrapin's neck. Realizing she's vulnerable, the terrapin becomes defensive. On land, she's got a nasty swipe. But in the water, higher resistance means she can't punch as hard. And her bite is too small to get purchase on the large, slippery cichlid. And now the fish have a new tactic. They try to push her over. Pushing with all their force, they smash their opponent onto a rock. The terrapin can't afford for her shell to be cracked. She retreats. The cichlids have seen off the threat. And the terrapin will need to look for lunch elsewhere. With claws twice as big as a lion's, it's no wonder this guy doesn't need any teeth. He uses claws up to four inches long to slash open ant nests and as weapons. He's known as the stinker of the forest thanks to his offensive odor that's said to be four times stronger than a skunk's. It wafts around his territory, here in Costa Rica. He's a lesser anteater. His territory means a secure food supply, females to mate with, and protection from predators so he'll keep it at all costs. But another hungry anteater has come looking for a piece of the action. He's staking a claim on the master's territory. The master is ready to fight for it. This anteater finds another anteater on his territory. Time for an anteater royal rumble. The master slams the trespasser to the ground. Their tails are key. They're strong and maneuverable, perfect for wrapping around your opponent to help pin him down. The trespasser tries to escape the bundle of claws, but the master's tail is wrapped around him. So he goes on anteater attack. Lunging his eight sharp claws at the master's body. The master aims right for the trespasser's tail. It's a game changer. They both adopt a defensive posture, using their tails to prop themselves up. They try to engage their flesh-tearing claws. 
the trespasser takes a strategic dive to avoid a hit. Before he can recover, the master swipes. But he misses and takes an uppercut to the jaw. The master knows he's beat, so he retreats. He heads off to find a new place to call home. And the trespasser explores his new territory. In the countryside, things may look tranquil, but look closer, and you'll see aerial combat so epic, it can end with either fighter being ripped to shreds. The lush riverbanks of southern France are home to the Emperor Dragonfly. With thin, delicate wings, this acrobat is an ace in the skies. Just over three inches long, it can fly at 30 miles an hour and maneuver in every direction, forwards, backwards, and even sideways, ruthlessly targeting its enemies with dexterity and speed. The Emperor of the Air spends up to 95% of his life underwater. This one-year-old dragonfly has grown big, terrorizing the riverbed. Now he's ready to rise up and claim his kingdom above water. He emerges with a gleaming set of wings. He wants to claim this stretch of river as his territory, but he'll have to take it by force from his brother. His brother is the resident kingpin. Dragonfly eggs are laid in water, so he needs a territory like this to have a chance of breeding. And as fighting dragonflies can shred each other's wings, today, he stands to lose it all. The usurper launches his challenge. And the dogfight is on. Their wings are powered by muscles in their thorax, which account for a huge two-thirds of their entire weight. This is a show of strength. They swoop and skirmish around every corner of this theater of war. But they're evenly matched, so they change tactics. Now they want to rip each other's flight muscles to shreds. Soaring high and then spiraling downwards, they burn massive amounts of precious fuel. And then the usurper's teeth tear into his brother's wings. Kingpin's flying days are over. The newly crowned emperor lets down his guard, but the beautiful riverbed conceals a terrible danger. Leaving the territory wide open, for the next challenger. It's not just the countryside where animals have to fight for survival. The brown rat is at home in the big bad city. 15 inches from nose to tail, weighing up to 14 ounces. It's the most abundant and widespread mammal on the planet after humans, living on every continent except Antarctica. It thrives because it's a brawler, holding on to life by the skin of its yellow teeth. The crows got urban street smarts too. Up to 20 inches long, weighing 18 ounces, the crow is an intelligent opportunist, preying on small or weak animals for food, using its beak and wings to catch and kill. Given the chance, it will happily eat a brown rat. This male rat is sick and vulnerable. 
a passing hooded crow spots an opportunity. For the rat, this fight is do or die. So he goes straight on the attack. He launches himself teeth first at his opponent. Rats have 16 teeth that are so sharp and powerful, they can gnaw through concrete. And a rat bite can cause a lethal infection. But the crow has the advantage of wings and can use them to move quickly in any direction. His strategy is to wear the rat down until it's so weak that a blow to the head would finish it off. He tries to get behind his opponent, avoiding his teeth, grabbing at his tail with his two-inch beak. But his beak's designed for impact, not grip. The rat twists free and strikes back. Rats can jump three feet high. That's like an Olympic high jumper, reaching more than 16 feet from a standing start. But the bird is determined. Things look bad for the rat. Until he maneuvers free again. And takes his chance to escape back to the safety of the sewers. The crow retreats. With nothing to show for his efforts. In the animal kingdom, some guys fight tough. And some fight with balloons. This is a male hooded seal, eight feet long, weighing in at 660 pounds. At first glance, hooded seals look a lot like any other seal, until they do this. Male seals can inflate their nose into a balloon to threaten other males, and amazingly enough, to impress the ladies. Female seals only have one pup a year, so in the Atlantic breeding season, Competition to be its daddy is fierce. Loverboy is 15 years old and has his eye on a lovely female. But he's not the only one. Fights for mates can end in death, but it's a risk both will take for the chance to breed. The challenger begins with a display of prowess. He inflates the black hood on the top of his head and blows from one nostril to inflate his nasal septum into a balloon up to twice the size of a football. Loverboy responds with a nose balloon of his own. When that doesn't win the lady's hand, they start to tuck in their nose balloons and get serious. The challenger makes the first strike. Loverboy bites back. With 30 strong, short teeth, either could inflict a bloody wound. But with 13-inch flippers giving very little leverage, they can only bite where they can reach. And a layer of insulating fat over one inch thick is a good defense. They inflate their hoods again, but they keep their nose balloons hidden as they can easily be torn in combat. Loverboy launches a volley of attacks. And the challenger beats a hasty retreat to the safety of the water. Loverboy sees him off. One more come hither flash of the nose balloon, and the girl is his. Throughout the animal kingdom, moms are something to be respected and feared. Their babies might make a great lunch, 
but moms always stand in the way. The African water dickum may not look very intimidating. At 16 inches tall and weighing just over nine ounces, she's the featherweight of animal fight night. But just wait until she has a nest to protect. Then she shows she's no chicken. This fearless little mother lays her eggs inches from a crocodile's nest. While the killing machine is in residence, the Dickup's eggs are safe from other predators. In return, the Dickup provides the first surprising line of defense for the croc's eggs when she's away. The Nile Monitor can grow up to six feet long and weigh up to 20 pounds, 35 times the weight of a dickup. A high metabolism means it needs to eat half its body weight every single day, and its favorite food is eggs. Croc or bird will do. The monitor is the pit bull of the lizard world. Attacking its opponent ruthlessly and relentlessly. With the croc mom gone, it doesn't take long for a hungry monitor to move in. If the dickup wants to secure her bloodline, she'll need to go head to head with this reptilian bully boy. Lose, and she'll lose her eggs, and possibly her life. She goes to battle with her baby's daddy at her side. They puff up their feathers and spread their wings, tripling their body size. Then they deploy their killer weapon, razor sharp two inch beaks. They aim for the monitor's weak spot, its eyes. Peck one out, and it could be enough to drive the monster off. Under fire from both sides, the monitor counterattacks. Its muscular body and strong legs means it can lunge a full body length forward in just one second. His main offensive weapon is his vice-like jaw. Four-inch jaw bones clamp together with so much force, they can easily crush a dick-up skull or snap its body in two. The birds stand their ground. Neither side can land a decisive strike until something changes. Mom is back. The dickups create a blockade between the monitor and the eggs. When the big mama returns, the monitor realizes it's now or never. The lateral tail whip is a defensive move. Making up more than half the lizard's length, his muscular tail could kill a dickup in a single swipe. But when the tail whip fails to find its mark, the monitor decides that taking on a pair of plucky dickups and a croc isn't a good idea.